Simon, would you like to say the same? Hi, I'm Simon. I've written down here, um, not too fast. So, <laughs> as a musician, well, a drummer, I'm usually stuck at the back, while finally I get my chance at the front. A year ago, I could not have done this, as I was about to go into the transplant list. Each day was a challenge. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at birth, a disease that affects the lungs, liver and pancreas. I was born with a blocked bowel, which needed major surgery at Great Ormond Street. One third of my bowel was removed, and of course having surgery like that means a lot of blood was needed. Things were not too bad until I was about 15, when I became clear that I would need a liver transplant. The holding surgery that I had every week until the liver was found needed plenty of blood, and the liver transplant itself, which took 10 hours on the 31st of January 99, also needed plenty of blood. The liver transplant enabled me to lead a normal life again as a professional musician. Being a drummer, keeping physically fit and strong is pretty important. I regularly play drums with Chas and Dave, who I also happen to be a big fan of since I was young. In 2009, my lungs were in a bad state and an infection took me to the edge. I was in hospital for two weeks, but the doctors and nurses at Patton's Hospital kept me going, but only just. From then on, I was using oxygen 24-7 to breathe. This was becoming more and more of an issue, especially with my drumming. By January 2011, my lung capacity was 20% and getting worse. One bad infection would have been serious. However, at the end of the year, I played drums with Chas and Dave at the O2 in London. I took the oxygen on stage with me, and after the gig, Chad said to me, next year, I promise you, you will have your new lung, and we will do this again next year. In April 2012, I organized a charity gig for breakthrough breast cancer. It was a Cockney night where we took London to Derby. Even though my lung capacity was now 16%, I was still drumming, even if I had to hide my oxygen behind a scarf and around my neck while taking a good fix between songs. I was aware that going onto the transplant list would mean that I could be called at any time, so I refused to go onto the list until after this gig, as I was not prepared to miss it. I did, however, go onto the transplant list the next day. I was still going out with friends and enjoying myself gigging and leading an almost normal life until the day before my transplant. On the 17th of August 2012, the phone rang at 4.40am. It was packed with hospital. Simon, we think we've found you some new lungs. There will be an ambulance with you in one hour. See you soon. That was the last thing that I remember until four days later, having my hair washed while eating jelly and ice cream. After 17 hours of surgery, 10 pints of blood, 6 platelets and 4 units of plasma, I was wheeled into intensive care and within 4 days I was walking around the ward threatening to bring my drums in. <laughs> 6 months later I'm recovering well and back at work, talking to people about my transplants. None of this would be possible without people like you. Thank you from the family of the donor. I don't know them, but I know they would be really pleased with the way things have turned out impossible without blood donations. Thank you from my family. Thank you from me. Your donations have saved my life. And by the way, Chaz was right. 120 days after my double lung transplant, I was back on stage at the O2 drumming with my new lungs. Thank you.